be up to, literally to the school department to determine uh, you know the uh, the impact on the students and that's a choice that um, you know, we can we can help avoid by passing the modular article because this is something again given the negative impact that's been created already uh, you know more of this over the next four years is certainly you know not something that's educationally sound or, or, or fair to our families so that's the description of, uh, of the need and, and why we're having them at the hood school uh, let me finally uh, just put this within uh, some context regarding the, the broader elementary school planning. Uh, and what I, I want to do is, is just provide a couple of slides uh, and talk for a couple of minutes about uh, the, uh, the recommended uh, redistricting plan over the next four years in the elementary schools and, and how this fits in. Uh, last fall, the elementary uh, school principals, along with Dr. Troughton and a team of uh, parents, uh, got together and, uh, and did a very, very detailed study of uh, over the next four years, um, in addition to the space needs, what type of you know, districting or redistricting or other implementation requirements might be needed uh, to, uh, to make everything work. Uh, again, the planning assumption would be at the best case through 2005, which is you know, the best case time in which a permanent space solution uh, might come online. And so our objective was to, uh, to create that plan, which would uh, identify space requirements. That's what we just talked about. Uh, but then also talk about the school structure, any re necessary redistricting, uh, and then finally implementation steps. Uh, what we found is that every issue had trade-offs. Uh, there were issues about cost and complexity, uh, education quality, and the impact on families and community. And what we want to do is, is uh, come up with a solution that's the most benign on all those dimensions. And then finally, what we wanted a solution to be is to be consistent with any permanent space solution, whether it's uh, a renovated Batchelder school or a Swan Pond school. We needed something that would, uh, would be implementable and doable no matter what permanent space solution was required. Because again, this is something that's unavoidable. So the recommended plan that's been uh, endorsed by the school committee and the, the school department uh, is to uh, maintain the status quo school structure, which was, uh, which was done last spring uh, for this school year. So the recommendation is that through, through 2005, the following would happen. Uh, firstly, the Batchelder Kindergarten would continue to be redistricted to the Hood School, uh, and that those students um, would return to the Batchelder, each class would return to the Batchelder for their first grade class. Uh, secondly, all special education and pre-kindergarten would be located at the Little. Uh, secondly, um, to accommodate that structure, again, our plan would be to site two modular units at the hood to accommodate the need for three additional classrooms in grades three through five. Uh, thirdly, that we would preserve and maintain the current two modular units at the batch and one at the little. Uh, those would not be going away during this time frame. We have approval from the Historic District Commission uh, to, uh, to maintain those modular units, uh, and they've, uh, they've endorsed this plan as well. Um, finally, the, the, the uh, recommendations that we came up with recommended that the school committee plan for the following impact on school operating costs. This is not something that's directly addressed by the modular article, but was part of the overall uh, redistricting recommendations. Uh, one recommendation is that uh, to fix the bus issues with the kindergartners that we talked about before, because we're continuing to, 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 to do this for the next four years, is that we would need to add one bus to the overall uh, suite of buses, and that would need to, to come out of the operating budget each year. Again, our committee uh, is, uh, is recommending this to the school committee. Uh, secondly, that, uh, that we incorporate the expected maintenance costs for both the existing modular units at the Batchelder, which you know, have some maintenance requirements internally as well as externally, and then also for the new modular units. These would include utilities uh, and other things like that. So that was our recommendation. Then in summary, uh, I just want to conclude by, by summarizing what we've talked about uh, on, on these three points. The, the, the first point is that action is required now to fix our elementary school space crunch. Uh, this is not something that, that we can you know, fairly avoid and step away from, even though there are longer term uh, planning efforts underway. There is no space left, and we've already created negative impacts on our families, our teachers, and our students. Uh, secondly, uh, we, we need uh, three more classrooms, physical classrooms, because there will be teachers and a need to teach those extra students starting next year. 
The second major takeaway is that the redistricting proposal that we, we recommended here on that prior slide, this includes the two hood modulars, is the most cost effective and practical solution for North Reading. We looked at more than a dozen options. I didn't go through any of them in detail here, uh, but many of them uh, required uh, much higher capital as well as operating cost impacts to the town. Thirdly, this solution would be equally consistent with any long-term facilities solution. So this has nothing to do with the Swan Pond School or a renovated batch. This is something that we need. Then finally, if the article doesn't pass, uh, I just want to leave everybody with this thought that our schools, our teachers, and our children will be impacted even further than they have been so far. So that's it. Okay. Thank you, Bob, for that uh, presentation. Uh, I think you could give. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you gave that presentation to uh, the school committee and what else? To the selectmen, I believe. Is that true? Uh, the presentation has been given to the historic district commission and the school committee. Okay. And I believe the school committee has uh, has forwarded the recommendations at a high level to the board of selectmen. Okay. And you're you're basically representing the elementary school. Yes. portion of the modulars and so to reemphasize for the middle and the high school it's an additional two in each place yes Is that correct? yes and and again at the middle school it would be to accommodate the increasing enrollment that our larger number of students have has created through the system and we're, we're literally over the next three years going to be four classrooms short so those two units would accommodate additional classrooms at the middle school uh, and then likewise at the high school uh, one of the two units would accommodate classrooms one would alleviate our, our significant cafeteria space issue. Okay. And I know, um, at, at least the middle school, I mean, with the situation that what the secondary school building committee is going through, you're saying three years, any solution that they would come up with isn't going to be in place for another three years at least, so it's required yes. that we have these modules. A absolutely. That's, that's the recommendation. Uh, and again, if, if there are questions, one other thing I want to mention is that uh, you know, the, the useful life of a modular unit is um, you know, could possibly go beyond three or four years uh, if there are continued delays in, uh, in our permanent solutions. And so what this, uh, again, our planning assumption was a four-year time horizon. Right. Um, and the, the hope is that it won't be any longer than that. Okay. And, but uh, to take that as a flip, then also if, for people who are thinking about voting for this, the modulars that would be voted for put in place if the long-term solutions are there, I'm thinking middle school, for example, yes. specifically those modulars can be used either elsewhere in the district or sold yes. to someone else as we're trying to buy. Yes, they, they could be repurposed within the town of North Reading for any, any needs uh, that might exist in any part of the town, uh, or they could be you know, sold or repurposed you know, someplace else. And now, of course, we can't account for that here in this funding, so we have to we have to fund the cash to purchase them now. That's right. That definitely. But for yeah. people to keep in mind, there's always that possibility that yes, you know, it's, it's used. If we solve our long-term problems. Yes. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate You're welcome. that. Thank uh, you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, again, this was just a quick and uh, brief overview of the needs and the uh, underlying reasons behind the modular uh, the modular proposal and the modular. Uh, question that's going to be on the ballot on February 12th. And so we would encourage you to get out and vote, and we would encourage you to vote for the modular question. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Dan. Paul Hand. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Wonderful, Michael. Thanks, Paul. Nice talking. We will broadcast live from Greeley, Colorado's sold-out Union Colony Civic Center on Friday, February 15th, 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time.